schools that I was never able to make friends. All that changed during the summer of 1989. 15-year-old Jenna shed her ugly duckling image and emerged as a sexy swan. All of a sudden, boom. My boobs got huge. I mean, I'm, I can't even tell you. I weighed 90 pounds and I had like a CD cup, which is very strange for a little girl. So I, I remember walking into my first day of class, my sophomore year, and I wore a tight t-shirt, no bra, just because I wanted to like throw it in everybody's face. And I remember everyone looking at me going, oh my God, what happened to Jenna? When she was around 15 years old, boys started to notice her. It really pissed me off because I didn't like the idea of other people looking at my little sister sexually. When the boys would come over to want to date Jenna, it was a little intimidating for them because I always answered the door in uniform with my pistol on and my nightstick. I always knew she'd get home on time. The minute I turned into a woman, everything changed. My hormones were rushing so hard. I wanted to have sex so bad. It was uncontrollable. Coming up, Jenna goes wild. There was my little 16-year-old sister on the middle of the stage, buck naked. By 1989, 15-year-old Jenna Mazzoli was a vixen in training. Jenna loved to drive the boys crazy, and she was just warming up. During the early 1990s, Jenna Mazzoli ping-ponged between two different high schools in Las Vegas. The petite young blonde wasn't much of a student, but she got straight A's in drugs. Jenna's brother, Tony Mazzoli. I started experimenting with drugs when I was very young and Jenna saw that and followed right in my footsteps. I loved acid and that was about all I wanted to do. I tried pot, hated it. I always got the spins and felt like I was going to throw up. One of my favorite activities was taking four or five hits of acid and just walking the streets of Vegas. Half the time that I would do that, Jenna would just follow behind me, making sure I didn't walk into traffic. I did acid for quite a long time. I really liked the feeling. I felt invincible. And I felt happy. And that was a departure for me. Because a lot of my life, I've been unhappy. I handled Jenna's experimentation uh, with drugs, probably like any other father uh, would. Um, I disapproved of those things, especially since I was a police officer. Still, 15-year-old Jenna had the tough cop wrapped around her little finger. My dad always loved me so much. It felt so good for me. He always put me on a pedestal. I was very protective of Jenna, probably because I had lost her mother, and she reminded me of her mother so much. My father had a very hard time connecting with me because I looked so much like my mother, I acted just like my mother, and he was always afraid of hurting me because he didn't want to hurt my mom. I nicknamed Jenna uh, Heartbreaker because every time I looked at her, she broke my heart. Jenna also broke the boys' hearts. My life was completely different after I lost my virginity. I felt like a woman for the first time in my life. And it felt like, I know it probably sounds weird, but it felt like it was my calling. I felt like it was something that I was good at. Because I had this effect on men. Jenna soon learned how to channel her raw sex appeal. One summer day in 1990, the flirtatious 16-year-old caused a near riot at a local racetrack. I took her to a bike run right outside of Las Vegas. And they were having a wet t-shirt contest. But I was like, okay, I'm going to do this. I've got a rockin' bod. I'll win it. When Jenna would see a contest, that means Jenna will get the trophy. So... 
I enter it and the guys that were standing around, they were like, well, you want a shot before you go up? I'm like, okay. Do a couple shots and that alcohol started going through my veins and I was like, woo, clothes coming off. And I looked over and there was my little 16 year old sister on the middle of the stage, buck naked, no underwear, nothing, holding the trophy and laughing. I remember my brother bum rushing me. What are you doing? Are you insane? And I said, I just won 500 bucks. It's like, right on. High fives all around. Jenna's rebellious streak also led to her first serious romance. I met him when I went into his tattoo shop and I had wanted to get two hearts on my butt. And he did those hearts. And that's how our relationship started. Jenna's derriere tattoo would one day be legendary to her fans. But it took aspiring tattoo artist Tony Mazzoli to add the finishing touch. My brother tattooed Heartbreaker around it. I didn't want just hearts. I had to be different and extravagant, you know? <laughs> Make a statement with my ass. What a little snot she was when she was in her teen years. This girl wore me out. I mean, she was in trouble all the time. Jenna was indeed a wild child and couldn't wait to escape from the protective custody of Officer Dad. In the fall of 1990, the high school junior busted out. I left my house when I was 16 years old because there was so much anger inside of me. I was angry that no one realized the pain that I had gone through in my life. No one cared to know. Except Jenna's new boyfriend, or so she thought. I moved in with him. God, what a bad decision. That was the beginning of the end. Little did I know that I was stepping into a world of drugs, sex, and dirtiness. 17-year-old Jenna didn't exactly go kicking and screaming. She agreed to pose while her boyfriend snapped provocative photos. Jenna then applied for a gig as a dancer. I wanted to realize my dream of being a showgirl just like my mother. I had a fake ID. My only problem was, I'm only 5'6". You have to be 5'8 to be a showgirl. So I would get lifts for my shoes and I would wear my hair really high. No one would hire me. Finally, I went to Vegas World and I got the job. I don't know how I got it, but I got it. Dancing at the Vegas World Casino soon lost its glamour. It was not enough money, too long of practice time for me. So I had a discussion with my boyfriend. I said, this is horrible. I'm going to quit. I can't take it anymore. He said, well, why don't you just go strip at the Crazy Horse? It's pretty much the same thing. It's only topless. And I came to the conclusion that it was something that I wanted to do. And I marched myself into that club all by myself, went up to Vinny, who was the manager, and I said, I want to work here. Vinny Ferracci was somewhat surprised. She looked like a baby. So she showed me ID. And he said, how old are you? And I said, 18. Well, everything was attractive about her except she had braces. And he goes, well, come back when you get your braces off. <sighs> I walked out and I was so bummed out. I called my brother. I said, Tony, I got to get my braces off. She sold me on the idea of removing them. He said, I'm coming over. He comes over. I said, can I pry them off? I had a pair of needle nose pliers. I said, well, let me see them. And I grabbed the little bracket on my front tooth and twisted a little bit and it popped right off. She winced and grimaced a few times, but we got through it. Very next day, marched myself right back into the crazy horse and I said, I want a job. She came back without the braces, which I never expected. You know? I asked her if she was interested in working my shift. I'm like, you want me to go on stage now? Yeah. I walked back in the dressing room all by myself.